Hey there, and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug review. And today, I want to talk about the latest episode to drop, Kuro Neko, which concludes one of the bigger overarching storylines that's been weaved throughout Season 4, the crumbling relationship between Cat Noir and Ladybug. And honestly, I think it's quite safe to say at this point that the season's been a little bit hit or miss. There's been some great episodes and cool moments and plot points, but then there's also been some baffling story decisions and a lot of squandered character development. But, if you ask me... I think for the most part, this episode signaled a return to form for the writing. Yeah, there were some weird bits, but I think for the most part, this episode did a decent job of wrapping up the storyline and was genuinely funny in a lot of its scenes. And I mean actually intentionally funny. Not so bad that it's good funny, which is what can often happen with this show as well. Anyway though, with all that being said, let's jump into the review. And we start off the episode in Adrian's bedroom where he's watching a news report about the latest adventures of Ladybug and the rest of the heroes, sulking as he does so, and getting mega salty that Ladybug didn't call him to come and help. And I do have to say, I feel like Ladybug did nothing wrong here. In almost every other episode, he turns up on his own to help her and vice versa. He has his own miraculous that he can use at his pleasure. He shouldn't need her to come and hold his hand. So this kind of plot point kind of missed the mark to me. Because it doesn't really make all that much sense in the context of the show, where usually they come together on their own to fight the enemy. I mean, I get that they were going for him not bothering because he feels like Ladybug doesn't care, but they frame it like she's being terrible for not specifically calling him to come and help. Yeah, I know sometimes they talk on those walkie-talkie things to tell each other they need help, and I get that they tried to frame it as him being upset that she said on the news that he was just a regular partner like all the rest, but come on. It feels like forced drama. They've had this whole underappreciated Cat Noir arc running for ages now. Probably a little too long if you ask me. And the way they decide to kick off the finale of that storyline is to have him get mad over a news report? I don't know, I feel like him being disregarded in favour of other characters whilst actually out and about on a mission would have made much more sense to me. Instead, he's just crying because he didn't take the initiative to go and help them. She's not his carer. Anyway, whilst Plague tries to cheer him up with a cheese analogy, Ladybug and her team of heroes conveniently make their way past his window, allowing Plague to convince him to go after them and lend a hand. And anyway, he arrives too late, once again feeling like an afterthought, and gets yelled at on top of that. So yeah, it's really not going our boy's way today, is it? But instead of acting like a rational person in this instance and telling her later that he feels undervalued and all that, he decides to abandon one of his closest friends by giving up his miraculous. Poor Plague, am I right? Like seriously, imagine being stuck alone with this kid, when you know that all your Kwame friends are together, but you figure, oh well, at least we have each other. And then because the girl he likes isn't reciprocating, he gives you the flick and dumps you back with everybody else, with hardly even a goodbye. Ouch. Low blow from Adrian Agrest. Seriously, I've seen a lot of talk about how Ladybug doesn't deserve Cat Noir. Hmm. <laughs> well, I say that Cat Noir doesn't deserve Plague. Also, he's never even specifically told Ladybug about how he feels tossed aside. Obviously, she has had a hand in this and should realise that she hasn't been the best partner this season, but it's almost like the writing expects her to have read his mind. If he had told her that she'd been ignoring him and not fighting like a duo like they used to, and then she blew him off, then yeah, be salty, that's fair enough. But written the way it was, it's not exactly helping his issue, so it's hard to sympathise with the character. Just felt weird. Anyway, he ditches the ring and then just leaves it out on this random rooftop. Like, imagine if Ladybug didn't realise what he meant and just expected to meet up with him later and it stayed out there lost. Or it was taken by some random bird that liked a shiny ring. Or maybe the wind blows it away. Or Shadow Moth is watching, sees Cat Noir transform on the middle of a roof with no hideaway, in broad daylight, learning his identity and knowing where the ring is. Like, wouldn't that have just been the worst case scenario? How selfish is this? And then Plague was also locked in the ring at this point, so he wouldn't even be able to do anything about it, right? If the ring was lost, would he just be stuck in there forever? Would he be trapped inside the ring, unable to communicate? What if some random or shadow moth got hold of the ring? Then Plague would be stuck with this terrible owner. Yikes. Adrian really needs to think things through. Irresponsible Cat Noir this episode. And before anyone says anything, yes, Ladybug shouldn't have yelled it in the way that she did, and of course she's been a crappy partner this season, but at least she realised how she reacted was wrong and was genuinely worried for Cat Noir. But I can't really say the same the other way around. I've seen a lot of hate for Marinette being thrown around about how she's treated him, and I get it, she wasn't great in the scenario, but neither was he really. 
I feel sorry for him, sure, and Ladybug has been more in the wrong in other circumstances, but his whole attitude to the situation is really rubbing me the wrong way. It's total nice guy scenario. Anyway though, Plague then proves himself the ultimate bro once more, first by ripping Ladybug a new one for neglecting her friendship with Cat Noir this season, and then by tricking her into letting him give the Miraculous back to Adrian so that everything can go back to the way it was before. And honestly, this was actually a pretty good plan by Plague, all things considered. I'm glad my boy's getting some limelight, considering most of the time he's treated like one of the dumbest beings in existence by the script. But on the other hand, this whole scene where Ladybug decides that she doesn't want Cat Noir as her partner anymore because he's in love with her, and Plague blaming her for ignoring him when he's in love with her, I don't know, it just felt a bit off to me. Especially from the Plague point of view. Like, just because he loves her doesn't mean she has to be his best buddy. It just felt like a weird thing for the script to focus on. I think it would have made more sense to emphasize that they're meant to be partners and that she hasn't been acting like one. Which, credit where credit's due, she hasn't. This would have made more sense, and it's the real issue here. But if we're talking about Cat Noir being a king simp whenever he's around, I do get Ladybug's point of view about not wanting her main ally to be flirting with her all the time, especially when she doesn't reciprocate those feelings. It would be really frustrating and guilting for constantly letting him down and distracting at times when they have a city to save. So yeah, when I saw that people were actually angry at her for this, I was a bit shocked. And I honestly don't understand why, because in the context of the issue with Cat Noir being pushy about his feelings, her point of view makes sense. Also, I just want to say again, I really loved Manipulative Plague in this scene. It's such a deviation from his regular character, while still not feeling out of character. Loved it. And all the follow-up scenes are actually legitimately funny as well. Marinette staying up all night trying to figure out who could possibly replace Cat Noir whilst also trying to figure out how she could give it to them without knowing their identity was really amusing. And having Plague actually bully Tiki into helping him lie to Marinette in order to get the Miraculous back to Adrian was another highlight. And speaking of highlights, this is where we move on to one of the funniest scenes in Miraculous history, where the show parodies those terrible mid-2000s teen movies where one of the characters suffers heartbreak, showing Adrian throwing all his pictures of Ladybug in the bin, throwing out his enormous stash of cheese, dumping his Plague sock puppet, and deleting all the photos of Ladybug he has on his phone. And I swear they've done this scene already this season, but I don't know what it was about this one. Maybe the ridiculously over-the-top orchestral number they had playing over the top of the scene? Whatever it was, it was gloriously ridiculous. Side note though, dude needs to chill with the pictures. Seriously, it's like one of those creepy super fans that has a shrine of their chosen celebrity in the closet. And before anyone says it, yes, I'm aware, Marinette does this too, I know she's a creeper. But we're seeing Adrian here, so that's why I'm commenting on it. Next time I see Marinette being a total sim for Adrian, don't worry, I'll call it out. Jesus, these teenagers, they need to chill, am I right? What's with all the photos? Ugh. But anyway, the ridiculousness of this episode does not stop here as we then see Natalie come out of nowhere wearing some sort of leg slash back brace thingy, dunno. And usually this would not be funny to me, but unless I've forgotten, we have never seen this thing before and she's been sick in bed all season. And then she suddenly just appears in this rather odd looking contraption. Like it just made me laugh, quite hard as well. I mean, I'm just getting this mental image in my head of Gabe being all, that's enough. I can't handle running this house and being a supervillain at the same time. Natalie, you're gonna have to suck it up, and I will make you walk with robot legs. I mean, it was just so funny to me, but I'm not sure I was actually meant to find it funny, which kind of made me feel a bit guilty. Whoops. Anyway, after another glimpse at Gabe being perhaps the worst father figure in France, we get to see even more glorious and funny Adrian Angst, where he veggies out on the sofa playing what is quite obviously a Mario ripoff. And I won't lie, whilst it was funny, this part got me heated. I don't care how sad you are, there's no way anybody in the history of the human race would ever fire up a video game only to walk into a wall looking sad the entire time. This entire scene, I just want to reach through my screen, take the controller, and give him a good scolding. Like, what is this? And also, Gabe can sense negative emotions, right? Maybe pay attention to your depressed son, you cretin. Ugh. But back to Adrian, he also just sucks at the game. Look at that, no lives left. Come on, son. And then, not only does he do this, but he also cross-contaminates Plague's cheeses? Unforgivable. 
Anyway, Plague tries to snap Adrian out of his stupor and convinces him that if he changes his attitude, he can make himself into a new and improved Cat Noir that's personalised to Ladybug, so that he'll never be left behind in missions ever again. Not exactly the healthiest option, but the story calls for a solution, I guess, and it's not as entertaining as just addressing the fact that, you know, he should stop harassing Ladybug and maybe talk it out with her about how she's been neglecting him. But what do I know, I guess? Anyway, after some cheese metaphors from Plague, the two try to adjust Adrian's attitude, and honestly, this one actually reminds me of the personality of my actual cat. Just completely aloof and with so many feline characteristics as opposed to needy and wanting attention. So yeah, they really hit it on the head here. And the montage of them spending literal hours of the day trying to figure out a good name for his new hero persona, I felt that one in my bones. I can't tell you how many times I found myself in a similar position. Although usually it's for titles of videos, because, you know, I'm not a superhero. Anyway, we then arrive at the debut of Catwalker. And I won't lie, I do actually like this costume. But the scene itself was a bit... Weird. Like, she falls for this dude in literal seconds, just off a few little questions and answers, despite the fact that she's supposed to be obsessed with Adrian above all else. I mean, even poor old Luca couldn't make the cut. Like, I get that he kind of acts like Adrian here, but also... Not really. It felt like Adrian doing an over-the-top Adrian parody. And honestly, the whole dynamic was kind of disappointing. It just felt... Meh to me. Especially when she tries to figure out the Lucky Charm sequence and it keeps flashing to him. It just kind of felt out of character. I don't know why, it just did. Also, when he arrived, I swear he pulled the classic Attack on Titan salute. Is this a reference to Eren Jaeger because Bryce voices both him and the English dub of Cat Noir? If not, it is a cool coincidence, but I really hope it is a little reference. That would be fun. But moving back to the scene, honestly, their whole action sequence as well, yeah, it was okay, but it didn't grip me. Not like the meme-worthy depressed Adrian scenes did. I mean, those had to have been the highlight of the episode for sure. Although speaking of the action sequences, the actual design of Kuroneko was really awesome. So, there's at least that if nothing else. I also enjoyed the fact that Ladybug was concerned about how she behaved towards Cat Noir and was worried that she got him akumatized and then berated herself for thinking that he turned into a piggy bank. I mean, that was actually funny. But still, the rest of it was kind of subpar. It just felt like a weak reason to get rid of him that he was too perfect and that's why Cat Noir should return. I wanted something more concrete than Cat Noir's not perfect and that's why he's my best partner. I mean, I'm glad they honed in on her missing him, but I feel like they really should have connected the two reasons a bit better than that. They didn't reinforce the fact that her working with Cat Walker was not as good as working with Cat Noir. It was just, oh, he's perfect and Cat Noir isn't perfect, therefore Cat Noir is better. <laughs> like, what? Explain yourself better, please. I feel like Cat Noir offers more than that. Look how they massacred my boy. I mean, the whole scene was still okay, and the parachute plan failing was actually kind of funny, but I think that everything was just dragged down by the fact that I was not really on board with this storyline. Also, harsh that she tells this guy to get lost after literally one attempt. One attempt and she says, nah, sorry mate. If it wasn't actually Adrian there, this would have been so tragic. Imagine if it was just some random person who was so excited at being able to be a superhero, and then after the first night, they get told, sorry mate, it's not working out. See ya. Ice cold. And lucky that this theoretical Cat Noir is so nice to just hand the miraculous back to the old Cat Noir. What if he was complete asshat and decided, nah, I'm going to keep this. There's just so much that could have gone wrong that it hurts. Poor Su Han would have a stroke if he knew. Anyway, he gets the miraculous back and Ladybug and him reconcile. Except they still don't really address the issue at hand, but it's still all happy days. Which brings us to the end of the episode. And yeah, I think it was a decent episode all things considered. Funny in parts, kind of dull in others, but overall, a good time. They kind of resolved the Cat Noir and Ladybug angst, but at the same time, in a not entirely satisfying way. But I guess that's to be expected. Although I wouldn't be surprised if they managed to dredge up even more issues for them in the finale, so we'll see. And on top of that, they basically reused yet another plot point from the New York special. A bit weird there if I'm being honest. Try a bit harder. It feels like this whole season has kind of been an extended replay of that special. Oh well. I still enjoyed it all things considered. But with that being said, those were just my opinions. And now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the episode? Like it? Hate it? Make sure to leave a comment and let me know.